Good morning, my name is Sydney and these are my colleagues Corbus and Lawrence and we form a company called Badfuse and what Badfuse does is they use machine learning to find real world solutions to complex problems across multiple different industries and one of the problems we've been working on is traffic sig signal optimization which led us to this paper um, or creating this paper a comparison of reinforcement learning agents um, applied to traffic signal optimization so we just want to go through the motivation of why we thought this paper was needed, um, our problem set up and how we approached it, and then take a bit of a deeper dive into the policies our agents actually came up with um, through some really interesting visualizations, and then just conclude with what we think these results actually mean. Okay, cool. So why did we apply reinforcement learning to optimize traffic signals? So current methods um, require resource intensive configuration and this results in systems that are costly to implement and to maintain. Um, with RL, we can create a low cost system with similar or improved performance. And then through simulation, we can have the system configure itself, removing the need for costly engineering hours. Um, a traffic optimization problems complexity increases as the network size grows. But yeah, with RL, we pro uh, provide a scalable solution for these types of problems. Okay, so our main objectives were to explore the state-of-the-art reinforcement learning methods for traffic light optimization, provide a performance comparison of reinforcement learning methods to methods currently used in the industry, and then provide a framework for more in-depth policy evaluations. Um, so here you can view the intersection we used during our research. Um, so the different links between the um, lanes uh, in represent the possible directions a vehicle can take from any lane. So they have, uh, for our intersection, they have three states. Green means that the vehicle can go, red means that the vehicle must stop, and then purple is where a vehicle can turn right if it's safe to do so. Um, so we defined, well, this intersection com comes from a paper from Way et al. And um, he, he, he has to find four, uh, eight different states the agent can switch to. And the goal is to switch at each time step to the state where, which optimizes the flow at the intersection. So he also defined four different traffic patterns. And we'll just quickly go over it. Um, so the first is a higher flow at the major route compared to the other routes and then we have a high left left turning flow on the major route that's p2 and then p3 we have the um, high flow on the perpendicular um, routes and then lastly we have a variable traffic pattern where there is high flow from the left hand side then we have equal flow from 600 seconds onwards and then lastly we have high flow from the right hand side so we benchmarked our method against three um, traditional um, traffic signal methods. The first is a fixed time approach where we used Webster's equation to calculate the optimum cycle length and cycle um, times. And um, then we also use um, Sumo's delay-based actuated method, which is a more a, a dynamic approach where a green phase can be extended when a vehicle experienced time loss. And then lastly, we also used Sumo's gap-based method, which um, supports dynamic phase selection and also entails prolonging the green time of any phase when, there, when a continuous stream of traffic is detected. So just to quickly give you an overview of our reinforcement learning framework. So we developed a package we call Sumo Gym, which is a wrapper for the Sumo simulation environment. It inherits the OpenAI gym interface, and um, this allows us to use this Sumo simulation environment like any other OpenAI gym environment. And then we utilize Tracy to interact with the simulation via using our Python code. And here on the right hand side, you can see the agent environment interaction. Um, at every time step, the agent performs an action in the environment, and then in return, the environment returns a reward and an observation. The reward signal for, um, for our um, research is the negative sum of the waiting time at the intersection. And the goal of the agent is to maximize this reward signal in the long run. 
and hopefully the the flow at the intersection is then also optimized. Um, the observation is the queue length at every lane in the intersection. So this is a 12 dimensional vector. Um, so we implemented a deep queue network and a, a PPO agent. The DKN is a value-based method and utilizes queue learning, whereas PPO is policy-based with an active critic network. Um, DKN is off policy and PPO on policy. And DKN only has one network, whereas PPO utilizes two networks. The, the output of the DKN is a deterministic policy, whereas the PPO um, has a distribution over the action space and that is a more a stochastic policy. So just quick to go over the results, but first a, a small video of our DPN and PPO agent in action. Um, <laughs> now, let me try to play this. Otherwise, I can first skip it and then continue, I'll show you a bit later. Another. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Ah, so let's, now let's go on. Let's <laughs> discuss the results. Cool. Okay, so yeah, just some results. Uh, so over here, we are kind of showing the training performance. Um, so you can see here on the y axis, uh, we've got the, the mean queue length, um, and that's kind of proxying for our reward. Um, and you can see the DQN was the PPO. So these are two different RL agents that we trained. Um, the DQN converging quite quickly to its optimal policy um, within you know, a few episodes. Um, so we ran these agents for 200 episodes where each episode is kind of this 1,800 seconds um, of the, the traffic that we mentioned. And obviously we trained on all four different traffics. So that's why we got four different agents here. And definitely something to note is this PPO becoming a bit unstable here in P4. So, and as you remember, P4 was that a uh, bit more dynamic traffic. Um, so we suspect that that dynamicness uh, definitely makes PPO a bit more unstable. Um, so this is just kind of the wall time for our agents. Um, so you know, how long does this need to train to be efficient? Um, and this is, you know, within three, four minutes, uh, both these agents kind of reach their optimal policy. And we train these in the cloud um, on AWS. Cool, so this picture um, is kind of looking at for all 200 episodes, um, for all the vehicles that were within the simulation, we are kind of looking at the distribution of their waiting times. Um, so just log, note the log scale here on the y-axis. Um, but what this shows us is that our DQN, our PPO, which is this red and purple line, um, no car has a waiting time you know, greater than about 50 seconds for test traffic one, 50 seconds test traffic two, similar, similar. Um, so this shows us that all cars were kind of serviced equally um, compared to the more traditional actuated, delayed, and Webster, um, with Webster kind of performing the worst, having that very fixed um, timing and not being able to adapt at all to, to demand. Um, similar kind of picture here, looking at speed. Um, so this is now looking at the distribution of speed across all of these episodes. Um, and something to note is that the RL agents, again, this purple and red, um, a lot more uniformly distributed um, around a mean, uh, where the traditional methods do allow some cars to have quite a bit more speed, you know, when those open lanes are open and cars can go quite quick. Uh, but this comes at the cost of a lot of vehicles kind of not having the, the optimal time and actually having to slow down quite a bit. Cool. This is another view on the whole situation, um, this time looking at queue lengths. Um, and again, our PPO and DQN agents, these kind of red and, and purple bars, are never really having a queue greater than about 100 meters, where the more traditional methods uh, definitely have a few queues heaping up. Um, these are all just different views to kind of look at you know, how is the performance of our agents. Cool. This is quite a busy picture. Uh, I'm going to take it from the side. Um, so what we wanted to do is kind of get into the brain of these agents, right? We wanted to take some intersection of the, the agent's brain and say, what are you thinking? Um, so this is a bit of a visualization that we came up for this. Um, and on the left here, we've got our legend. 
Um, and each of these rows um, within the spider plot is kind of percentage time spent in each state, right? So we've got eight different states that we allow to be in. Um, and depending on these little shapes that we've got here on the right hand, says what percentage time did these policies spend in a specific state? So just something to note is that the benchmarks are on the diagonal because for the benchmarks, there's no concept of training and testing. You kind of run it on P1 with P1 and you kind of see what it follows. Uh, whereas for the RL agents, we were able to train it on a specific traffic and then test it on other traffic. Cool. So something to note that kind of jumped up out, out at us uh, was this training on P3 um, and then testing on P1 and P2. Um, and there's this very significant little bird-like pattern that you can see for the DQN, right? Um, similarly for training on P4, this little bird-like pattern comes out here as well. Um, whereas the PPO follows this ball little kite like pattern. Um, so I've noted that with these little stars on the on the legend here, as well as the little dots for the, the PPO. Um, and what we're seeing there is that these two agents learned two very different policies to serve the same traffic. Um, and if you remember, the performance was quite comparable. So it is really interesting to see these different RL agents converging to a different policy, having similar performance. Um, something to note, uh, the DQN kind of opted for this phase two, which is, you know, opening the taps all the way for this north-south line, um, whereas the DQN rather preferred to use the state three and state five to serve the north-south lanes, but at the same time kind of giving some way for the, the turning traffic. Cool. And that was all I wanted to say there. This again, trying to get a bit of an intersection into the brains of these agents. Um, over here, we're just showing the state transition matrices for the uh, benchmarks. Um, so what this is showing on the x-axis, we've got all our states. Um, and on the y-axis, all of our states. Um, and the heat maps here are kind of showing how, what does it count? How many times within all of these episodes and all of these runs did we go from one state to another? So Webster and Delay-based got these nice little diagonals. Uh, so we've arranged them in this order to be nice and diagonal um, so that we kind of show the sequence that Webster and Delay-based follows. Um, and these are obviously fixed sequence uh, methods. So there's no variability in which phase or which state needs to come next. Uh, whereas Gap-based has got the ability to change uh, depending on, on what it's what it feels like when you have to specify which states um, it's allowed to go to. We kind of said, you know, choose where you want to go. You've got the ability to go to all the states. Um, and then obviously different policies that we get based followed for all of the training traffic. All right, so now that I've introduced this plot, now we see it for uh, the PPO and the DQA. Um, so again, here we've got the uh, ability to go, we trained on this and we tested on the different traffic. Um, so the training here is on the kind of rows. Um, and something quite interesting to note is the similar little pictures that are coming up for the training traffic, right? So if you look in the little row one, um, you'll see the, the pictures look quite similar. They're perhaps different in frequency, uh, but the same little artifact pictures coming up for the PPO. Um, and that is very much indicating to us a bit of overfitting. So the PPO agent very much learns a policy on the traffic that it showed, and then it can't really adapt to other traffic. It kind of knows it's one thing that it's doing and, and can't really do anything else if it's shown different traffic. Whereas the DQN is a lot more adaptable, um, a lot more generalizable. Um, what did surprise us a bit was the unstochastic nature of the PPO. So if you remember, Kobus mentioned that the PPO algorithm has, it kind of provides us a probability distribution across all of the states when it comes to prediction time, uh, where the DQN is kind of very more deterministic. Uh, but this pictures over here are hinting that the PPO very much converged with very little variance on those probabilities. So it's really quite sure on what it wants to do um, and doesn't really choose any of the other states uh, too, too crazily. Cool, yeah, so we show that both the DQN and PPO are um, capable of efficiently and effectively train good performing policies. Um, like Larry just said, the PPO agent typically only use a subset of all phases, whereas the DQN has a wide spread in, in its policy over all of the phases. Um, yeah, the agents tend to overfit on the um, traffic it's trained on, and we observe these artifacts when we test the agents on the different test traffics. 
Um, but we believe a more encompassing training set can result in a more robust and efficient solution. Um, and the agents still perform well on all of the test traffics and showing the ability to adapt to the different types of traffic distributions. So yeah, we found that the road to success is really free of traffic jams. Um, uh, thank you, and is there any questions?